Hi and welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a video request based off of Microsoft Access 2016. Today's request comes in from Carrie. Carrie says, will you do a video on the Word and Access MOS exam? Alright Carrie, well I've done the video on Word MOS, make sure that you check that one out. Right now I'm going to do Microsoft Access 2016. Alright, so you're probably watching this video because you have your Microsoft Access test coming up. And so I'm going to put a few tips at the very end of this video so that you can uh, make sure that you pass this test. And I'm going to show you also what you're going to see on this test. So let's go ahead and have a look. I've created a database here with two tables on it. And so I'm going to show you basically everything that you're going to see on this test. However, I can't demo everything on this video, otherwise it would end up being very long. So I'm going to show you the basics and what you're going to see. So in, within the file tab here, you are going to have to know that you have to compact and repair your database. And then under the Save As menu, you will have to save different database objects. So make sure that you know how to do that. As far as printing, I didn't see a print option in any of the uh, tests that I took. And I did want to do this test while it was fresh in my mind. And I took the test about two weeks ago. All right. So other than that, uh, in here, you're going to see this option right here that says Options. And so in this options area, they may ask you to change your current database options. I know when I was looking uh, at the test on the project, it said display form. And if you had a form to display, you would display that form uh, upon opening. So uh, make sure that you know how to do that. As far as other things within here, I didn't really see too much on the test. However, it is good to get familiar with your access options. All right, so beyond that, within the Home tab, you are going to have to switch your views depending on what you have open. So I'm going to open up the Students database here, and you will have to know how to edit it in Datasheet view, which is what we're currently in, how to edit uh, current records as well as create new records. You will also have to know how to use the Design view. All right, so within the Design view, it will ask you to attach a primary key to certain uh, fields. So make sure you know that that's in the Table Tools Design tab, Tools group, Primary key. Okay, you will have to know how to delete rows. All right, so let's say I wanted to delete the address row. I will know how to do that. Within this design view, you will also need to know how to use your property sheet. Okay, so within the property sheet, you could edit all of these different options here. And I'll pull this out just a little bit so you can see. All right, so within here, I believe that it had me edit the description on certain fields and a few other options as well. Okay, so that's within the property sheet right there. Um, as far as, I'm gonna switch back to data sheet view and I'm gonna close this. As far as the rest of uh, the home tab goes, you will need to know how to cut and copy records. So if I wanted to copy a record, I would uh, make sure that I know how to do that and then paste it into the spot that I needed it to go or the table or query that it needed to go in. As far as sorting goes, you will need to know how to sort in ascending and descending order as well as filter by form. So make sure you know how to filter by form, right? You click there and then you can search for certain criteria and then toggle the filter, right? All right, so uh, beyond that, it, within the records group, okay? Within here, you will need to know how to delete certain records or delete a column, all right? So make sure you know those. You will need to know how to add a total row to your tables okay or your tables or your queries so make sure that you know where that total row is located finally within here you will need to know how to find and replace okay so find is right here replace is right there okay and that's within the find group make sure that you know that keep in mind that you will have to know the difference between current field um, and whole or current document okay as well as whole field and any part of field Okay, so make sure you know the difference between those two. And then finally, getting into the text formatting group, you will have to know how to format your text. This is basic uh, Microsoft Word knowledge even. So just your font sizes, font colors, bold, italics, underlines, those things should be pretty self-explanatory. All right, so that's within the Home tab. That's what you'll need to know how to do. So I'm going to close my object here. And no, I won't save it. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, within the Create tab here, all right, so within the Create tab, I believe that the only part within Application Parts that it had me do was Comments down here. All right, so uh, you will need to know how to use the Comments. And then within the Create tab, you'll also need to know how to create a table. However, I didn't really have too many uh, questions about creating a table. Most of the tables are pre-created in the MOS exam. 
Finally, in queries, you will need to ha know how to create a query based off a of query design, which gives you a new blank query in design view, okay, just like that. And you'll add your tables to it, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. So let's say I have these two tables right here, okay? I always expand my fields out so that I can see what I'm doing. And I would add certain uh, areas to the query, right? Or certain fields to the query down below. You will need to know how to do that. I'm just adding random ones right now. And then you will need to know how to base criteria in ascending or descending order. And you will need to know how to uh, set criteria based off of certain elements okay so let's say I run this query right here we see my query let's say I just want to look for history majors okay so I would go to the design tab and under criteria I'll type history and then if I run that query we could see now it just shows my history majors you will need to know how to do those types of things uh, within the MOS exam so make sure you're aware of that okay um, again, within query design or the queries group, you also need to know how to use the query wizard. Okay, so using the query wizard, it'll most of the time say create a simple query or create a cross tab query. Um, it usually won't ask you for du duplicates or unmatched. So you go with simple query wizard, you click OK, and then you'll choose your fields again, right? So you need to know how to do this. You'll go through, you'll name your query, and then you'll click finish, and you'll see it displayed here. All right, now one of the uh, options that you have to do after you create this query, I have my query right here, is you need to know how to use your query in design view as well. All right, so if I'm in design view here, uh, again, I could run the query to see how it looks, and then switch back to design view. We notice that a few of those postal codes right here are empty. One of the... Uh, Criteria that most people don't know is is null. All right now if you type in is null and click run It'll actually give you the blank Postal codes. Okay now. I didn't see this on my project when I did uh, the MOS on 2016 However, I did see it on 2013 So make sure you know what that criteria means and then finally if let's say I wanted to uh, have the student ID be in ascending order and I ran the query, but then I don't want to actually show the student ID column. Sometimes it'll ask you to do that, but still have it within the query design itself. I would uncheck that box and then click run. And now you can see that is no longer shown. All right, so that's what you're going to be working with in terms of query design. All right, and then finally we get over here to forms. All right, so forms will be in the MOS exam. And so make sure that you know how to uh, build a form. Now what I always do is I go to the table that I want. Let's say I go to the scholarships table and I click form. It's just going to build a basic form off of that scholarships table. Now most of the time you're going to create a form in the MOS. You're going to need to know the different views within that form. First off, the form view allows you to actually edit the areas within your form, right? And that'll update it on the table as well. And then you could go here to the layout view the layout view will actually change the layout of the uh, form itself and you could add in other fields okay that was in the MOS you will need to add in certain fields and then also the property sheet where you can adjust the width the height the size um, and the overall format of your different text box and text box controls okay so that's what you're going to see in terms of the design tab here uh, within a range you will need to know the difference between the different types of uh, form layouts as well as adding in um, certain uh, rows and or adding in rows and columns into your forms and then uh, I didn't use merge and split move or position for the MOS that I took all right, finally, in Format tab, these are the uh, selection and font groups and number groups. Those we already talked about. And then you can apply conditional formatting. However, I did not see that in the MOS, so I will not cover it right here. All right, so finally, I'm going to get into, uh, I'm going to close up this form right here. I'm not going to save that. And then let's go back to that Create tab, and I'm going to create a report. And I create a report based off of scholarships right there. You will need to know how to edit forms, uh, sorry, excuse me, reports within the MOS. So, you know, editing a title, you might need to do that or uh, setting your print range. So I'm gonna show you a few options within the report here. And so if you go to the views group right here, you could view it in report view. 
okay you could also view it in print preview and you could also oops let me close that and then you could also view it in layout view all right now layout view is going to be the one that you're going to use most within uh, the MOS exam and it's very similar to the layout view in the form uh, that we just looked at so I'm not going to cover too much in it however make sure again you do know how to add in existing fields and the property sheet okay uh, they might ask you to add in a header and footer or your page numbers that's all within this group right here and then finally if it asks you for any grouping or totals you could add in those into this area here so again make sure you know how to edit and change your reports all right so I'm gonna close this report now and I will get into uh, actually in macros and code they did not ask any questions based off of macros and code on the MOS that I took all right, so uh, as far as external data goes, external data, they will ask you to import and link. Uh, usually they'll ask you to get an Excel file, an access file, and a text file. Okay, so you'll be given all three of those files at the beginning of your MOS exam. So just make sure that you're aware that uh, they will ask you to import those files. Usually you won't have any exporting in the MOS. All right, so make sure that you know how to do that. Again, you'll be given those files at the beginning of the test. Um, as far as the more button goes, they did not ask any questions on here on the MOS that I took. All right, finally, going into database tools. Again, I talked about compact and repair database. That's in your file tab. It's also within the database tools tools group right there. And then within the macros group, they did not ask any questions off of macros on my MOS exam. All right, now for relationships, they did ask uh, to create a one-to-many relationship. And so if I click relationships and I add in these two tables here, uh, I'm going to basically expand these so that you could see them. You're gonna to wanna to need, you're definitely going to need to know how to create uh, relationships on your tables. So if I create a student ID to student ID relationship right there, I could enforce the referential integrity. It'll tell you if these options are something that you need on your MOS, um, on the actual uh, steps that you're doing. And so you can click these if you have to, it'll tell you whether or not you, you need to do that. And you'll create your relationships, okay? So it might ask you to create a relationship report. That's right here in the design tab, tools group, relationship report. You click that and it'll create a report for you. And then it might ask you to uh, export that to PDF or um, uh, actually, or to just close it. So if it does, you could just export it to PDF. You'll click that button right there. All right, so there's my report. Uh, I didn't have to do anything within uh, this view right here, which is the design view for the report. However, it is good to know that in this area, most of the time, if they ask you something in the MOS, it's going to be based off of the property sheet um, or adding existing fields, okay? So most of the time, that's what you'll be working in and it'll be based off of your reports, all right? So there we go. So that I will close. I'm not going to save any of this. All right, so there we go. So now we've looked at all of the tabs, what you're going to need to do. So hopefully that'll help you out for your MOS test. Now I'm gonna give you three uh, short tips on what you should do before your MOS test, before you actually begin it. Uh, the first one is if you don't know how to do something on access, my recommendation, skip right ahead to the next uh, task, okay? Because, uh, you know, when my students take this test, a lot of times they're gonna spend 15 minutes on one task trying to figure it out, when really they should just jump ahead uh, and make sure they don't run out of time by the very end, okay? Now, uh, my students have taken four MOS tests and access uh, has been the most difficult, and the problem is with time, right? So they spend too much on one spot, make sure you just flag it for review and then jump ahead. Uh, next tip is definitely use G metrics. Okay, if you have G metrics installed on your computer, make sure you get a code for that and use G metrics. It's going to get you in the mindset of taking this test and you're going to be on the clock, which is a really good thing to, you know, get that, uh, get it in your head that you're on a timed test. Finally, um, my access playlist on my channel here covers a lot of what you're going to see on the MOS test, and I'm going to be adding more videos every single week. 
uh, so that you can pass your MOS test. So feel free to watch my Microsoft Access playlist. Um, and then finally, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, this was a video request for Carrie, so I hope that helped you out. If you have a video request yourself, put a comment below and uh, ask a question. If you need help with something, I'm willing to make a video for you on that, and hopefully that'll help you out as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped, and have a great day.